guys. So today we are having tacos for lunch with my mom's super famous taco meat. And I think she's made it in one of these Every Big Cast videos, but I don't know for sure. I thought it would be an amazing opportunity for me to show you guys how to make my super amazing, super pro skill guac. So I have been making this guac recipe for over a year and a half now, and I've made it for school lunches, regular lunches, dinners. I think I made it for breakfast once too. Yeah, I did, and it was really, really good. And it's super easy. It only takes like 10 minutes to make with prep and stuff. And there's only seven ingredients. So, everyone who has tried this guac recipe, including my friends, family, and teachers, has loved it. Except for James. He's weird. So enough of my jibber jabbering, it is time for me to share with you my amazing recipe. I usually make this recipe with four avocados, but I like to cut them all first. That way I can just scoop them all out at a time and make it so the spoon stays as clean as possible. It's as easy as possible to scoop them into the thingy. Oh, these avocados are super nice. Hey, I got it. So, one of the my super fancy, super pro skill tricks is when, before I cut one of the avocados, I forgot to do it on the first two, I just like to squish it around like you would with an orange and it makes it easier to peel. Just makes it a little bit easier. And look at that. So when you're making guac, I would recommend using a little riper of avocados because when um, you want to like cut them and take like the pit out, in case you saw me struggling with one of the, taking the pit out of one of the avocados and you could tell that that one was super not ripe and the one that was super easy to come out and it just swooshed out, that one was definitely a lot riper. The trick does help though, but also it being riper does help. So this one, super easy to squish even without the pit. Er, but this one, even without the pit, I can only squish it to there. Well, this one I could like squish. It's a very big difference between the two. So basically a riper one is going to be soft and squishy and it's going to be a lot easier to scoop out. So before I even scoop the avocados out of their shell. I like to put in two tablespoons out of the four tablespoons of lime juice. So that just makes it so the avocados get flavor on the bottoms and on the tops before you even mush it. And sometimes it even makes them a little more mushy. So one downfall to having the less squishy ones is that they're a little bit more difficult to scoop and they make the guac less smooth and so they also make the guac not easy to mash up so it makes it less smooth did you video that one that one was perfect yes oh, that's a good one see look at how easy this one went Mom always says I have to keep a clean workspace. So after a super difficult arm workout, I got all of my avocados into a bowl and now it's time for me to put my other two things, tablespoons of lime juice in. So when I do have the super non-cooperative avocados, I find that a pastry cutter helps a lot with mushing them up. But you could also use like a blender. Now you can see what it looks like all mushed up. Now I'm going to start cutting up my veggies. I usually do like one tomato this size or like six cherry tomatoes. But I do like to cut off the ends when I bring it to school because I don't want friends getting a crunchy bit of a tomato. And this is the first tomato out of our garden this year. So I finished cutting up my tomato when I put it in, but I also put in around 
two tablespoons of finely chopped onion. Could be any color of onion, but that's, we like our red onions. It's so colorful and pretty. So right now I am squishing the garlic. I did about three cloves, but I usually use garlic powder, but since we have the fresh stuff, we might as well use it. And I usually use around half a teaspoon of the garlic powder. So now we are down to our last two ingredients, the ones that make it taste good. <laughs> we have our salt and pepper. So I usually like to do around half a teaspoon, a little bit less of salt. Like, oh, whoops. I usually like to do around that much. I'll just do the shaky shake over top. And since everyone really likes pepper at home and at school, I find it easier to take the lid off when I do this. I like to do around one teaspoon of pepper. Maybe a little bit more, but we'll decide that later. And now I'm just mixing it up. I might do a little bit more pepper. We'll do a taste test first. Yeah, still a little more pepper. Needs more pepper. I love pepper. Whoa, that's a lot of pepper. I'm strong. Mom just said, whoa, that's a lot of pepper. But she's never seen me make the guac when I put in the salt and pepper. So this is actually like less than what I usually put in. I'm going to do another taste test. Just because I feel like it. Oh. I think it needs more pepper. So we have now finished our guac mountain. And I really hope you guys enjoy this recipe. And I cannot wait to have it on our tacos. Alrighty, so here we are with the final product. I really hope you guys love this recipe. And if you do, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, no, that, that's my best one so far. That one was my best one. <laughs>